Hey, welcome to the Multifamily Growth Cast. Man, I am very excited for uh, today's guest and to introduce you all to, the, to today's guest. You know, he's high energy. He's very highly successful as well. Um, just a wealth of, knowledge, uh, wealth of knowledge. And I'll say this, I'm freaking fascinated by his work. I follow him on social media, have for a long time. Uh, so he's a real estate maverick. He's done, I think, over a billion dollars of deals in real estate. But he's so much more than that as well, man. He's a business coach. He's an international speaker. He's a best-selling author. Once again, just a wealth of, a wealth of knowledge, uh, even more so when it comes to mindset. You know, he's helped people grow their wealth and their health and just their personal power. Uh, he's also a husband and a dad of four beautiful kids. And I cannot wait to see the value that he brings today. Chris Crone, welcome to the show, my man. Tyler, I appreciate it, man. Super excited to be here with you and all your amazing people. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I don't know what's going to come from it, but usually good stuff. <laughs> yeah, we have, we've we had no discussion beforehand. I didn't send him any questions. We're just going to freaking go off the cuff and it's going to be hugely valuable. I know that for sure. So uh, I have so many things that I want to ask you, man. A ton of things that I want to ask you. We're going to try to squeeze it all into 30, 45 minutes. So let's dive in. You know, first thing that I think maybe we just kind of give a background if you don't mind of of you like who is chris crone most a lot of people probably already know who you are uh but man where did you where did you grow up where did you start give me that background yeah. i appreciate that tyler so so i'm from seattle washington and uh my mom and dad had a crazy big family of nine kids i'm number four wow. and uh you know i went to i think i was i was raised in a very green environmentalist family that's like you know you know, save the world, save the seas, you know, save the trees. Uh, <laughs> so I'm, I, 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 I've got that perspective that definitely comes from my childhood. But, you know, at the same time, I, I realized that my parents are poor and nine kids is expensive. And I always felt like it was going to be my responsibility to care for my parents. So the only thing I really cared about as I got older was I, whatever I'm going to do for career work, I got to have enough money for my family and them. I want to make sure I take care of them. And that kind of became like, the guiding North star that I think had me turn out very much the way that I did, because I realized one income won't be enough. I, I told myself I was going to be a doctor. And then I started taking, you know, pre-med classes and I failed out of them. Like chemistry just freaking racked my brains. I sucked at it. My brain didn't work that way. Uh, but I took other classes like statistics and I found out that I just love, I love stats. This is definitely like my favorite thing. I love, I love everything about polling statistics and trying to understand the way the world works mathematically. And so, you know, by the time I got out of college, I, you know, popped one bubble dream of I'm going to be a doctor and provide for my, my parents and my family that way. Uh, but at the same time, I was also financially free because I use statistics to gamify how people build wealth in the world, 90% do through the game of real estate. And that kind of kicked off my whole journey. I mean, when you're 26 years old and you don't really have to have money or make money, you know, life becomes an interesting game of like, great, what are you, you going to do then if you don't need money? And, and so that was, I, I hope, by the way, everyone has the opportunity in life. Everyone has the opportunity in life to have enough passive money coming in that you don't have to work. Because I think only then will you truly start to understand who you are. Yeah. yeah. I Man, I love these. I, so when you have the passive income coming in, truly understanding who you are, I totally agree with that, by the way. Like the more, as I've grown on my side, real estate wise, I've felt the same way. I've, I've learned more and more about myself, but I want to backtrack a little bit, man. So you went through a lot right there. Like you grew up, what did your parents do for work, by the way? So my dad was in, in construction. And so he did, uh, I would, I would, during the summers, I'd work as roofing companies and he would do remodels. And, and so I, I got a lot of exposure to just being comfortable around the notion of, of real estate, adding value in real estate. And then, uh, dude, my mom was stay at home, you know, domestic engineer with, with, you know, nine animals in her herd. <laughs> domestic engineer, nine animals. I love that, man. So where do you fit in with the kids, by the way? The oldest, youngest, middle, where you are? Like three older brothers and they were super competitive in, in sports. And then I had like, I was sandwiched between my four younger sisters. And then I have one younger brother down there that ended up being the entrepreneur like me. Um, and, you know, compared to my siblings today, they're all wonderful, beautiful souls who, you know, they went to college and got degrees and they have jobs and they're productive members of society. Um, you know, and I don't know why I was built in such a way where that this disgusts me. Like, as in, I don't, I can't stand the idea of normal. Um, it, it, it's, 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 a, it's a version of mediocrity that just makes me want to like rip my soul inside and out, throw up all over myself until I die. 
<laughs> I just, I have zero desire to fall into any bucket called normal, uh, just because that's really boring for me personally. And, and like most people aren't built that way. That's, it's not a superpower. That makes me really weird. Um, and, and so that's really made me hunger for the novel and for the different and for the unique. And I'm that guy that's like, oh, I, I, I'm never going to travel anywhere else in the world till I've seen everything once. Like I want to see everything and been able to travel the world, do some extraordinary things, a lot of really expensive things. So I, I, I like I like falling outside the normal zone um, just because I don't know I, I guess I just I want I want life to feel a little more interesting and unpredictable. I have a, I have a huge insatiable need for uncertainty. Oh, I love that, man. So can I ask you something with that though? Because I believe that I believe I'm wired that same way. But I also, and I believe a lot of entrepreneurs are wired that same way. Like when I look at norm, normalcy, like you said, it, it does, it makes me sick. I just, I can't wrap my head around it. And I'm glad that I can't wrap my head around it. But it also, it's it's challenging sometimes when you're getting, I don't know if you, I'm sure you've experienced this, but you get kicked back from, you know, the outside world because you're breaking the mold, you're doing things normal. Did you experience that? Especially because I think you said you started in college, correct? Yeah, I mean, it was really weird. When I bought my very first house, it was this tiny little podunk shack of a bungalow. And I rented out the basement and they covered my mortgage. And I remember inviting all of my local friends and family nearby. And they all celebrated with me. They were so happy for me. I was like, wow, I just did something kind of normal and cool. Maybe ahead of my time, I'm 23 years old. A couple of years later, I moved into a much nicer house. A three At the time, the $350,000 house was definitely a little bit above the median. And um, it was a newer home. And by the way, had a basement apartment that paid for everything, but family came over like, oh, this is amazing and cool. And then two years later, I moved into my 10,000 square foot custom built home on the golf course, right out, tucked outside the canyon. And I'm like, oh, sweet. I'll invite all my family and friends over. House is bigger. Let's extend it and like get the extended family over. Everyone walks in that day. And the weirdest energy walks through my door that I did not anticipate. It stunk real bad. Everyone made really weird faces as they're looking and gawking at the Venetian plaster and the tall ceilings and the double coffered ceilings and the fact that we had kind of gone all out to make this a beautiful home. I mean, think about it. I just graduated that year from college. I'm driving BMWs, Escalades, traveling the world. And I swear that if there was a line on their forehead that I was trying to read, it was saying, he's into drugs. Like he's into drugs. Like, like people didn't understand me. And in that moment, I had never felt like such a foreign alien. And I, I realized that, you know, birds of a feather flock together and entrepreneurs do best hanging with entrepreneurs, non-entrepreneurs do best hanging with non-entrepreneurs, but you take a successful person and you put them in a normal crowd of average earn income earning and the energy is going to can get really weird real fast. And so that's when I discovered that. And um, it was kind of a, a weird turnoff. Um, it, it really affected me negatively for a few years because I started realizing I'm losing family and friends, not to poor choices um, or unreconcilable differences, but just due to the fact that our worldviews are so different that when we get together, they can clash. And so I found that I felt like I had to walk on eggshells around certain family members and don't talk business to all of these different people out there. Um, for a variety of reasons. First of all, wealth can breed jealousy. The pride of the poor, I swear, outweighs the pride of the rich. Um, and then rich people can certainly be bad too, right? There's good and bad on both sides because money itself is an evil. It's a magnifier of just who we are as people. So um, I, 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 I struggled with it at first until I graduated to, I think I took a mask off of inauthenticity and realized you can't care. Like I have to do me and they have to do them and I don't have to judge them. I can just love who they are. If, if their definition of normal, it makes them happy. I'm totally happy for them. I'm just trying to do me the best I know how. Brother, what you just mentioned, I think is such a huge hack. It, it, it's interesting. I just posted a video talking about this. Like when you, when you, you know, you're experiencing growth, when those in your inner circle start to be that source of negativity yeah. and it's, it is, it is challenging, but what you just said is key because I think a lot of people look at that separation of you're separating yourself. You have to continue to build your inner circle. And they look at that as uh, that you don't love those people. But you, what you just said is that you love them regardless, man. You love them, but that doesn't mean that you have to stay in that circle and stay compressed. You have to continue to grow, which is building your circle. Well, I actually adopt a different belief, which is I'm a traveler and people are free to move in and out of my world. And it's cool. My, I have this old world idea. Like I got my family. I'm supposed to be close to them. I got three buddies, three friends only, and they hang out close with them. And then that world got smashed to pieces. And I realized 
that when I had friends that were also millionaires and billionaires, literally, that really cool things happen because we become the average of the people we hang out with. And I no longer wanted to hang out with people that didn't inspire greatness in me for my life purpose and path. Um, and, and so, you know, I, I needed something different. And one is the one that you're born into and then the second one is the one that you choose and you get to have both right i surround myself now with some of the most inspiring successful people many of them are also mentors to me and man do they teach me i get schooled sometimes one of them made a 14 million dollar mistake last week uh which wasn't bad it was fine but i remember my loving mentor roland frazier being like well next time maybe don't say this say that i'm like oh i'm gonna save me 14 million dollars but uh man i'm glad i know and i'm like glad to have a friend like you yeah, to walk you through. I love it, man. I agree. You know, can I tell you, that's one of the reasons that I wanted to connect with you. Same type of thing where you're like, man, I want to, I'm going to surround myself with people that inspire me. Uh, the minute that I knew that Shay and Joe had a connection to you and knew you, I was like, dude, listen, I want you to connect me to Chris Crone, man, because, and I'm serious when I say that, dude, you're a wealth of knowledge, tons of energy. And I'm excited once, once again, while well, I'm excited to have you on the show so that everybody can benefit from that. Well, so to be honest, honest, I mean, when you reached out, I hope I didn't come across as a douche, but I basically said, I want to meet you first. I want to understand you and your intentions and what value we can create a little bit. Uh, but that's because I like, I really have standards of who I like to hang with. And I'm like, oh, I, I really like Tyler. He's a cool dude. I, I saw that golf cart moving in the background there in Hawaii. That dude could be living here in Utah. He's not. It's snowing. Uh, so, <laughs> no, uh, I, yeah, I, I'm super careful where I bestow my yeses and noes because your destiny will be formed by a combination of all your yeses and noes. And I think sometimes people are too careless with too much yes or too much no. And you've got to, you've got to develop an SOP, a system for when to say yes and when to say no, because uh, it's going to determine all outcome. Okay. So I want to drill in on that. And first off, you did not sound like a douchebag. That's exactly how I operate <laughs> as well, man. I, it's the same thing, man. If we're going to spend some time and energy, I want to know. So no, that's, I, I think the same way. I think you have to think the same way if you're living with purpose, right? It, with direction instead of just meaning proactive instead of reactive. So, so I want to drill down on that. Okay. Like when did you become, when did you start in the real estate space? I think you said college. And then when did you start living with purpose and, and how did that, how did that start to form? Where did you learn that? That's a lot of questions in one. That is, that's a lot because my, my personal development journey was forced to come upon me during my entrepreneurial real estate years because you can't grow financially without also impacting who you are as a person. And if you try to separate those two, I, I think it's going to be a painful experience. So the more money I made or the more success I had, the more it, it exposed blind spots in me, weaknesses in me. And I had to address them because they were too painful if I didn't. Um, real estate started for me in college. And, uh, you know, kind of the long, short story of that is I, I uh, kind of, I had three mentors that have made over $10 million in real estate. And I remember asking each one of them, all right, so which real estate strategy is best? And they like, well, it just kind of depends what you're doing. I'm working on this flip, this solar finance deal, you know, this multifamily. I'm like, no, 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 no. Bad answer. I don't like it. Point A to point B, there's a straight line. Give me a straight answer. Which is best? And they said, well, that's not fair. I said, you tell me why. I said, because you need a really complex algorithm based on someone's perception and bias. And they said, what, what do you care about? And I'm like, well, I, I'll tell you what, I don't want a real estate strategy that's a job. It's got to use very little time. It's got to be passive. So at least time. And I, and I ended up kind of taking a lot of thinking time and I realized for me, the ultimate real estate for what I value is going to be a strategy that takes the least time, the least effort, the least risk, makes the most money, works in up and down markets and provides value. And at that time, I evaluated Tyler, all 30 major real estate strategies and one emerged and it ended up being a short term buy and hold, five year hold on single family homes purchased in the best markets. And so... I'm like, huh, that's weird. Let's try it. And 25 homes later, I had a six figure residual income. It was truly passive. And then the next year I doubled my portfolio and I doubled. And a lot of people are like, they fancy me as a real estate guy. I'm like, no, I'm a systems guy. Everyone that succeeds at anything in life, whether it's at the Olympics or real estate or business or marriage or parenting has a system. So I'm a system hacker and I like to scale systems that work. So I figured out how to scale my real estate. I mean, fast forward today, there's 324 markets in America, and I invest only in five of them. They are the best ones with the highest ROI. I'm averaging well over 50% annual ROIs, and I buy a house every day. But I never use my own money, I never use my own credit, and I never use my time. 
So it takes me about an hour a month. And I'm making about, you know, it's, right now it's over $300,000 an hour, um, you know, for having a team that does everything. So systems, right, is a part of how we grow. And I think there's a system for, for hacking your own personal growth in life too. Bro, bro, <laughs> you just land blasted. For everyone that's like driving down the road, they're listening to this podcast and they're like, I got to pull over and like rewind and take notes and pause. Like you just land blasted so much great knowledge. Like I'll tell you the first thing is that you, I believe so many people just think that they, they're looking for and they're hanging on like, what is this strategy? What, what's, yeah. what's this one strategy that I'm going to learn? Yeah. You had purpose. You knew what you wanted the re, real estate vehicle to provide for you. And then you searched and, and you, you were specific with it. You lived with purpose and knowing like, Hey, and then made it happen, obviously, because I, I, I got to stop because I think that what a lot of people just heard was, was strategy. And I always think that strategy matters the least. I think what matters the most is the filter by which you make decisions. The real, and so if I can, I just want to superimpose this on the yes. conversation. I value time. We, everyone claims it's your most valuable asset, but I don't believe most people. You know why? Because their financial decisions show me that what they really care about is money. And when you care about time, you care about people. When you care about money, you care about things. And what I mean is, guys, uh, I'm going to throw my, my, my mother-in-law um, probably out the window on this one. And if she ever hears this, she'll kill me, but I'll say it anyway. <laughs> my, 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 my wife wants to hang out with her mom um, and do this rock show, uh, meaning in Denver, they have like this gem show. My wife's into gems. Like I take her to the biggest Tushan show of the year, year. We just go buy a like crate full of this stuff. And my house is littered with things that apparently make my wife really happy. Um, and so she's like, I would love for my mom to experience this. And so we're like, mom, like, why don't you come with us for the weekend? It's short. It's just, you know, three days in Denver. And, and she twists her arm. She's like, fine. And we're like, great. Here's our flight information. Join us. It'll be great. And her mom calls back the next day and says, hey, guess what? I saved $62 because I found a different flight. And I'll just get in five hours left. And I'm like, okay, this is a classic example of missing it. You didn't get it. This is about people. This isn't about this isn't about money. You, you went out of your way. And, and everyone should know this, this adage if you don't. Poor people spend time to save money. Rich people spend money to save time. That's an important filter for me. Because at the end of the day, we, Tyler, you and I, we have 24 hours a day, just like everybody. But this week, I'm in thousands of places at once. I'm getting 10 million views on all of my social. This is not on accident. This is on purpose by design. It's like right now, I've got 10,000 people hooked up to the Chris Crone Ivy to make their life a little bit better. That only works because of how I value my time. And so, you know, tomorrow I'm taking my wife to Disneyland. We're taking a private jet. Because if I fly public, guess what's going to happen? I'm going to have to overnight. If I fly public, even first class, I have to get, I have to take an hour to get there. I'm going to be there two hours early. And then on the way back, it's going to be another three hours. Plus the fact that I have to choose a different destination for flying that I got to wait for everyone to unboard and get on and get off. And it's literally going to, on average, when I fly private, I save nine hours. That's a working day. I'm going to take the day and play with my wife. And I'm, I'm going to leave at 10 a.m. after my kids are in private school in our house basement with a private teacher. They're not even going to know. We can't tell them about Disneyland. And then that night, I'll be back at dinner time. We're going to spend the day and we're going to play and have a great day. And yeah, it's, it costs a lot of money to charter a private jet. But guess what that does? It buys me time. How do you know why it's worth it to spend that money on the private jet? Do you know what your dollar per hour is? If you do, make decisions accordingly. Most entrepreneurs, what they did is they gave up security in a job to get into some, something like real estate investing, which is a different type of job. It takes time. And if you don't value your time, most entrepreneurs, they have some things they do where they're worth a thousand an hour. They have some things they do where they're worth thousands, but they do 80% of what they do is worth less than $50 an hour. And they won't delegate it and they won't trust people and they won't hand it off. And 80% of their time is wasted when they have higher earning opportunities. And if they would say no to the low income stuff, then they would either get their time back or say yes to things, earning them double their current highest rate. And then you can't help but become a millionaire and eventually a billionaire. Like that's how you grow. There's a system for this thing, but not if you value money instead of time. I remember that is, I, I talk about this all the time. That is absolutely my number one major motivator. And what you talked about time, what you just talked about is because you have an abundant mindset instead of a scarcity mindset. A scarcity mindset, that is somebody who it's once again, valuing the money aspect. 
because they don't believe or understand or know that more money is going to come. When you value your time, that's an abundant mindset. When you value people, that's an abundant mindset. And once again, you have purpose and direction and clarity, and you're able to weed out and make decisions. Like, have you ever read the book Essentialism before? No. It's a great book, but it talks about exactly that. You know what? Everyone on this, on listening to this, you don't even need to read it. Just go back and listen to the last five minutes of, of Chris talking. That's essentialism. You only make decisions in line with the most essential impact activities. Like, I believe that being busy is very normal, but having an impact is rare. And you have impact when you have abundant mindset and a focused mind, right? Not a scatter. Being busy is disgusting. Like to me, I'm like, what, like what worst thing could there be on the planet? That's why my, my wife and I are like, you know what? We're taking our kids out of school. We're going to give them a world education. We're going to hire our own teachers that are going to also honor our standards and do life the way we want. And that's because school isn't supposed to be daycare for kids. It's supposed to have meaning and impact. So let's get rid of all the stupid homework assignments. By the way, just for the record, my children are not learning things that the standard education thinks that they should, like trigonometry, because I'm teaching my kids that if you're a successful business owner, you can pay people to do trigonometry like you're never going to need that in life anyway. But should you, there's an expert out there. I'm teaching my children specialization, matching passion and purpose. And where you just get to live a life max with meaning instead of busyness. Busyness is like, man, aren't we all so crazy busy? Everyone is so busy, but where are they going? Are you better off at the end of the year? Where are you going? Are you fitter, stronger, happier in your relationships, wealthier? Are you leaving greater impact? If you're not, then you're busy with all the wrong. You're just giving all the, giving false yeses and the wrong yeses. I know, I guarantee you, man, there's a ton of people listening to this. And me and you both, before we jumped on the, the call, the only question I asked you is how can I provide value to you? And the only question you asked me is how can I provide value to you? And they both, we both said this, we want to provide value to each other and to whoever's listening. And I know that there are people who are listening to this who are busy as hell, man, busy yeah. as hell. And they're thinking to themselves right now, like, how, how can I make this happen? How can I go and make yeah. this work? Well, dude, I find it hard to believe that very many people produce more than you do. I look at your social, I look at what you're doing business wise and, and you have multiple businesses. So how do you, when did that start is one question where you started to value that time and started to, yeah. to say no, So say no. So um, for me, it all comes down to leverage. Uh, when I was in, when I was in college, I was a full-time student. I had a full-time job and I was doing my real estate business on the side full-time. And even though it wasn't 40 hours each of full-time jobs, the level of results I got in my real estate investing felt like, wow, this is even more meaningful than if I went to my job full-time. And by the way, I was going to school um, for, for, for like an 18 credit schedule. And I was also working like the minimum 32 hours a week to be classified as a full-time employee for benefits, et cetera. I'm also married. the day and man I think I did the work of people and I, and I wasn't communicating an emotion as much as I was communicating math I was telling her no 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 I listen while some people are just going to school full-time I also work full-time so we don't go into debt but I'll have my business going and I'll be retired by the time I get out of school like I'm productive I can measure that with three the measuring how many Chris Crones are there available? I started measuring how many Chris Crones are there in the world. And so I remember when I hired my buddy to help grow my real estate and he was doing it full time. And I'm like, uh oh, I just cloned myself again. I got four Chris Crones in the world. I'd measure five, then I'd get to 10. And I got to tell you something being in 10 places at once was invigorating because all of a sudden, at that point, I was making a half a million dollars a year, not. $50,000 a year. Hmm. That's weird. 10 Chris Crohn's and 10 times the income. I wonder if there's a correlation there. There's a hundred percent correlation. I think people should ask themselves, how do you clone yourself or a part of yourself today? If someone's watching this and they're not an entrepreneur and they've got a job, I'll give you some weird math. I bet that if you're making $50,000 a year, which is kind of what the average American makes coming out of college, I bet that some of your job has you doing activities that are worth a hundred dollars an hour. And I bet you got busy work at $15 an hour. I'm going to challenge you. Watch this. Live on 20% of your earnings. Take 20, uh, live off of 80% and save 20. And the 20% that you save, don't invest it except for to get your time back. In other words, 
pay someone if the cover if the company won't and pay them to do your busy work because it's probably 80 percent of your job you'll get 80 percent of your time back for 20 percent of the pay that's called leverage what could you do with 80 percent more of your time well you should be able to produce at least another forty thousand dollars a year if you make fifty thousand dollars a year so you've got to learn how to do this positive arbitrage of i only say yes to what pays me the most and i hand off everything else and you'll start being in multiple places at once. There's math for every one of those decisions. Awesome. That's such, such a great actionable takeaway. I'll tell you that right now. It, and that also comes down to confidence and it's abundance as well. Once again, a scarcity mindset doesn't want to hire somebody. They don't want to bring somebody on because then they they look at that as giving money away. It's because they yeah, value think, money, not time. Well, and let's go further than that. Anyone that has scarcity is confused and they think that they work for someone else and then they receive money. That's prostitution. You got to flip it around. It's a total different game. Every dollar that you earn is money that you put time out for. And if you're not making sure that outside of your bills that shouldn't be running your life, there's money left over for you to invest in, into either getting time back or getting time back through making money through other investments. Like it, it, it's like walking backwards uphill on, a, on an escalator. It's counterproductive. It's something that you should be doing with your time. Let me tell you some of the financial decisions I make in my life. On Mondays, I'm in studio for three hours and my team will turn that into 1000 pieces of media that will go out to the world and I will get millions of free organic views every single week. And it's in the in service of creating value for people. It also does drive my business. Wednesday is my wife's day. She gets me every Wednesday all day long from sunup to sundown. My kids get me all Friday. School on Friday is dedicated to dad teaching them what I think is important in life. Last Friday, we went hiking. Uh, etc. Saturday is my day. Sunday is God's day. He gets the whole day. I only give my company half of a Monday for production of, co of content. And then they get me Tuesday and Thursday. I could work more, but I don't because I don't like me working that much. I don't work less because I don't like me working so little. There's a balance. And so why make money and become a successful investor? And why figure out how to own your time? It's because real financial freedom has little to do with money. It has everything to do with time and resource. So for me, I want to be free to have the equilibrium and balance that makes me happy in my life. My legacy and my destiny will be forged from those choices. We have to get ownership, Tyler, of our life. We have to unmortgage ourselves from the stupidity that we are enslaved to. I got to tell you, I learned something. When we had our very first conversation, I took a couple notes. Um, I took a lot more than just a couple notes, but one of the notes that I highlighted and that, I've, that I have, and you can ask anybody in my office, was do you, you have a huge social media influence. And I, if you remember, I asked you, man, how do you do that? Because, man, once again, I told you, I want to learn from you. I want to learn from everybody that I put in my circle. That's why I put them in my circle. And you mentioned that three hour a day thing. And we've started to implement it here. And it's had, because at different times, the more that you grow, you start to get busier and busier. But once again, valuing time is so important to me. And Chris, I've been feeling so busy and I don't like myself like that either. But I'm going to tell you what else I just learned from you. You do that. I love how you have a specific day for your wife and a specific day to teach your kids. I just, I want to implement that, man. I have time that I do a date night and I have time where I go do family time during the week, not I mean weekends, a different ball game. But I love that idea of specific, a whole day to your, to your wife and then a whole day to teach your kids, brother. I will implement that. And I appreciate you sharing that. That's impactful. I appreciate that. And I don't think the quantity is important. I think it's a matter of quality, you know, for my wife and I, generally we give each other a few hours every day, two or three hours. Um, we are best friends. We love spending time together. And if life is too busy that we can't have that time when life feels more meaningless, if uh, knowing how to make more money and then pursuing that when you need to spend more time as a parent, then that money is meaningless. That's blood money. Then that's moving backwards. People should be asking, what's my highest and best and what's right? I, I always tell people, you got to master the game of money because it has rules. And if you play it, you'll get rich. Everyone can be rich. Everyone can be rich. Everyone can be rich. Everyone can also make financial choices that get their time back. And it might take you a decade. It might take you two decades to get to the point where you can eventually say, I'm free. And now I get to figure out what I'm really about when I'm not giving my core time to things that I don't believe in. But in the meantime of getting there, there's an opportunity every day to juggle three balls um, magically. Number one is your health. Every day you should pour into your health because 
time, you know, I, I spend time at the gym to get stronger and faster. I'm 42 years old. I'm stronger and faster today than I've ever been in my entire life. In, in, in April, I'm doing a physique competition just for fun. I'm going to get down to 5% body fat again. And, and just, and, and, and it's just a challenge. It's something to go for. So every day I have a little bit of my nutrition and my exercise, but the second ball I'm juggling is my relationship. Who cares if you have all the money in the world, if you lose the love of your life, or if you guys aren't, are in, who wants to be a nine out of 10? Dude, you didn't sign up to be a nine out of 10 and 10 out of 10 takes effort and it's hard work, but it's never going to happen unless you invest enough. By the way, right now, if you're listening to this and you're unhappy in a relationship, that's on you for not investing enough into it. Don't point finger at the other person. Are you putting the resource into it that you committed on yourself? You've been given a body, honor that. Number three, as long as you're in some free country, like we still, you know, <laughs> hopefully we can hang on to a little bit longer. You also have the ability to make financial choices that will grow wealth. So every day before you go to bed, make sure you're healthier, your relationships are happier and you got more money. And that's something you can do every day. That takes you probably less than two hours a day to guarantee you can check those three boxes off. You do that 20 years from now, time to fly, you'll wake up and say, I love who I've become. But if you go on one of those categories, I'm sorry. At some, point, at some point you trade all your money for more health. At some point, there's a lot of things that we trade to get balance, but balance is not an illusion. It's something that's available every day. It just takes a little investment. It takes, it, it takes, it, 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 exactly. It takes an investment and a decision to do that. It's funny that your goal is 5% body fat. Brother, my goal this quarter is to get down to 5% body fat. And uh, so the race is on, bro. The race okay. is on. But I'm going to tell you, I'm just going to say, like, every time you point this way, I see your arm. I'm like, shit, I need, I need to gain some mass, man. <laughs> 5% will get on you either right way. <laughs> <laughs> it needs to happen. It's, it's, it's funny. So I mean, you, I, here's my question for you. And this is um, kind of a se- almost, a, I think, probably a selfish question for me personally, but I think that everyone will benefit, which is as through this growth process, the more that you grow, the more that you grow, the more things that try to pull on your attention, um, that balance starts to, to wane, right? And you have to check in. How do you check in and how do you make sure? Yeah. I think I know the answer, but I want to I want to ask you that. How do you, how do, you do that? I'm going to give you probably a very, very tangential response at first. I think everyone has to recognize that as kids, we are grown and raised in a no world. Don't touch that fire. Don't touch the hot slave. Don't do this. Don't run into the street. Don't impregnate that thing. Don't, 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 don't. Everything is done. But then we become adults. And guess what we now have? By the time you were 16 years old, you were told no 50,000 times. It is now in your subconscious mind. And so most young adults that are entering adulthood usually end up having relatively sucky lives. They start like having reality, like hit them in the face and realize, wow, this is weird. I, like, I, I tried three times and it didn't work and I feel like giving up and this isn't working and that's not working. And the life gets snuffed out of us. And it's because of the, all of the impregnated no that we have in our mind. At some point we have to shift from the no world where you're gonna get mostly poor results. You have to, this is weird because we're going to end up there again. You have to shift to the yes world. When you say yes to everything, like think of that movie, Yes Man with, with Jim Carrey. If you say yes to everything, guess what will happen? You'll have a lot of cool things that can now happen that couldn't before. And you'll have a lot of things go bad. But you're going to have a mixed bag of yeses and nos with good results and poor results rather than just mostly poor results and the negativity that comes out of the no mind. So chaos of abundance now ensues because you're saying yes to everything and some things are working and some aren't. Phase three. So we got to move from phase one, the no world, to phase two, the yes world. Phase three is where you have to learn the, the power of yes and no. And you're going to start saying a lot of yeses and a handful of no's. When you grow and become more successful, you're going to get fewer yeses and more no's. And when you become, let's call it a billionaire, because I think by age 46, I'm going to be one. When you become a billionaire, my theory is that I will have a handful of yeses and almost no no's. I'll return to the no world, but this time conscious and aware and positive. And so when you say, well, what, like the more successful, doesn't that breed more busyness? No, it breeds more no's. I have to change my standards. So what I am evaluating at your question, Tyler, is I'm always evaluating my standards. For example, here's a simple one. Time is worth dollar per hour. Um, I doubled my income every year for the first several years until I, I hit the million dollar ceiling and couldn't get past it. until I got a breakthrough. Tony Robbins smacked me in the face, really good metaphysically. And so this is what I learned was I didn't have standards in my life. So for example, let's just say a person earns hundred dollars an hour. Everything that you're doing right now that you could pay to someone else that is $30 an hour or uh, an hour or less, which is probably 80% of what you do. Say no to you doing it. Say yes to them doing it. 
you will reclaim 80% of your time. Then you say, well, Chris, I, I want to make more money. What should I do with all this time? Only say yes to things that earn you 200 an hour. Wait, 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 wait. But Chris, my, I'm currently at $100 an hour is my highest. 80% of my time was $30 or less. What do you mean to 200? It's a standard. Just say yes to 200 or more. Guess what will happen? The universe will start delivering what was always available. The thing that you now desire and want at a more conscious level. So now you're like, wow, I filled up my time with all this $200 an hour work. Well, guess what I should do next? Now only say yes to $400 an hour and the $100 an hour stuff, outsource, give it away. You're always hiring your replacement. If you're not, you're living in a mistrusting world where, where you're gonna be limited in what you can do with your life. So I raise my standards, Tyler. I raise up my health. I raise up my nutrition. I raise up my parenting. You have to become aware of your standards and then ask if I want a better life, I have to raise my standard. You have to have a system for evaluating your standards. Yeah, what a great answer, dude. You just freaking murdered that answer. Like I love that. I love just, because here's the thing, man, I would tell you, I'll tell you what I just learned from there right there too, is I think my answer to that would be to be more intentional and to say no to things. But I love, I absolutely love how you backtrack. You do, you have to say yes in the beginning to gain these experiences of successes and failures, to be able to know what you should say yes and no to. Man, that was, everyone that is listening to this needs to go back and rewind and re just re-listen to that portion alone. And it will be a life-changing podcast that you just listen to. I know for sure that that is a life-changing bit of information that is gorgeous, man. That's awesome. You spent, so you've spent a lot of money. You've told me, I think you told me like $2 million or something on mindset and wealth type trainings. Like, and it is, it shows, like it shows with your knowledge as you, as you do that. Um, is that what have helped you learn this or is it life experiences or both or uh, your, your well, I, mean, I, I think that there's no greater accelerator on the planet than getting proximity to the most successful people. I, I think that there's no greater accelerator on the planet than getting proximity to the most successful people. Um, I believe in shortcuts. It'll always be an unfair advantage. And most people are content with normalcy or the slow cut, which just baffles me. Uh, if you, for example, wanted to be like a world-class guitarist, would you call up the phone number of your neighbor who's offering guitar lessons? Or let's just say you had this crazy opportunity to get exposure to Ed Sheeran and have him show you how to finger the guitar. Like if you had to choose the neighbor or Ed Sheeran, who would you take? The reality yeah. is Ed Sheeran likely is going to be a better teacher, but that's actually not what you're going to get out of the experience. He's going to inspire you to push your standards higher. Every time I join a mastermind and hang out with successful people, it's not for strategies. The strategies will grow you, but that's the least of the benefits. The greatest benefit for me is that when I hang out with cool people, I just want to do more or be more or, or grow or be more successful. And um, I was in Mexico two months ago, hanging out at the beach house with my buddy. He sold this company a few years earlier for $1.6 and um, the reason why I'm hanging out with him intentionally is because I'm like, I'm mentoring what to do. He shares with me how he makes decisions and um, it's next level in some of the factors. And so as I'm hanging out and I'm like, Hey, evaluate this business, evaluate this, you know, and he was sharing with me his process. I learned so much more than if I were to go to the school of hard knocks. And this is how most people learn. I'll do it all by myself. Great. That is the slowest path because you can only operate on what you know. And if you're operating your life on what you know, then you can only get more of what you've gotten. But if you're trying to get more than you ever had before, don't trust yourself. That's stupid. Trust somebody that has already been there uh, and, and has, has summited that rock a hundred times. By the way, if you had to climb Everest, would you want to go with like the brand new Sherpa that's like, this is my first time knowing that 5% of the freaking are going to die on the rock? Or would you go with the guys like, all right, I'm a little crotchety. I've done this for a hundred billion years. But this is my 114th time up. Trust me, no one's ever died on my watch. Who are you going to, who's, who, like, what, who's, what, are you going to put your life in somebody's hands? Do you want it to be in the noob or do you want it to be in the, into the, like, master Jedi? So you should always reach for the most successful people because they will always be the fastest and safest ascent. For sure. I, that's a great analogy, by the way, because you relate it back to business and, most businesses fail. And why do most businesses fail? It's because they're trying to do it on their own in a, in a scarcity employee-based mentality instead of surrounding themselves with people to, to above them. Right? Trying try to go somewhere you've never been before on your own. The dumbest thing a person can do is try to get somewhere they've never been before on their own. Meaning you, you must really think that you got it all and you're going to fall tremendously short than if you get 
a true pro in your corner. So, I, so like if you were to say, you know, that money that I spend on mentors, and now I'm far eclipsed that millions of dollars. Um, yes, like every year I set a healthy chunk of money I make aside into the future version of me that I expect others to draw out of me. Um, you know, Roland Frazier invited me. He's got three masterminds going on next week in, in Austin. And he's asked me to speak at all three of them uh, over a 24 hour period. He's like, I need Chris from here, here, here. And I'm like, deal, let's go. Um, and I'm so excited just to frankly rub more shoulders with him and some of the people that he knows because I'm, I'm making an investment into spending time with individuals that will help me bring out the best of who I am. Every one of us has such amazing potential. Saddest thing is going to the grave and not never having really known it or tapped into just a small part of it because it's a moving goalpost. The moment you finally live in a manner to get it, then all of a sudden that potential has just moved further. And that's why we have billionaires on this planet. That's why we have amazing musicians. That's why we have people that have tapped into their X factor and do crazy things is because it's like going to the gym, they're pushing themselves to that next level, like no one else's business. What are they chasing? Just the best version of who they can be. That's it. Can I tell you what motivates me a ton and what helps me get to those pivotal moments is, as I, as I hear you say that, is I, I identify these things that bring the most meaning in my life. Like when I'm trying to make a decision and it scares the shit out of me, it's something that I know is going to help me grow, but it also scares me because I know there's some fail, uh, some, uh, uh, some uh, risk of failure there. I identify the things in my life that bring me the most meaning and joy. And I look back at the decision that it took to get there. And every single time it is a decision that could have went either way. Right. And I, and I asked myself, man, how, like, and it makes me, it li literally makes me sick. You're like, what if I said no to that? Like, what if I didn't pursue that? What if I didn't do that? What if I didn't do that mentorship program? What if I didn't surround myself with, and it literally makes me want to puke. And so then what do I do? Dive in, dude. And so, well, you know, I'm, yeah. right, I'm working on a new book right now. My, my, the book I just wrote that I'm so excited about is coming out in November, but I've already written the next book after. And the next book is, it's, it's all about how you develop hindsight vision with uh, basically having seven filters before you dole out a yes or a no. And one of those is we talked about today, it's valuing um, time or valuing money because often we'll make very different decisions based on what we're valuing. And another thing that I use for making those decisions is my intuition. How does it feel at the end of the day? If you only make logical decisions, then logic will only bring you as far as it has. So I got to tap into higher powers. I also have the lens of asking pros and experts and mentors. They have life experience. I need to leverage their experience to know sometimes what decision that I should make because I don't have enough life experience to know how to make that big kind of decision. Uh, dude, I, I, I broke one of my rules and I brought a 10% business owner in on one of my businesses because he's had a thousand business exits and I'm trying to exit this business. And he says, well, Chris, if you do it with this math and this math and this math, this could be a $2.6 billion company in five years. And that was six months ago. And uh, my team's like, so are you going to bring him on? He wants 10% of the company. I said, well, he knows how to do things I've never done. He knows how to structure contracts and deals I've never done before. He'll help me win business that I've never done before. And they said, well, let's make it real simple. Are you going to be 10% better off with giving him 10%? I said, no, I'm, I'm going to be a thousand times better off by giving him 10%. So guess what? Great. And now, yeah. Good decision, right? So great decision. It's an arbitrage though. It's always trading less for more in my relationships and money and everything, making sure it's a mutual win for everybody. Man, man so good. That is so good. Everything that you just spit right there is, is fantastic. I'm excited to read your new book, man. Uh, Limitless is your other, is the book that you've had. How long did you write Limitless? A while ago. Um, four years ago, I documented my own strategy of how you can break through every limiting belief that gets in your way. Our life is governed by what we believe and most of what we believe is garbage, but we don't have a way of challenging it. So I wrote a book on a simple five minute process for finding your blind spot, the stupid limiting belief, how it's hurting you, getting leverage against it, and how you turn it around. Uh, so that book's called Limitless. I wrote that four years ago. And um, after I kind of put in my Malcolm Gladwell 10,000 hours, I purged 10,000 limiting beliefs that I documented out of my brain and then helped thousands of others do it. I'm like, I'm going to write a book. Um, but that, that almost represents a whole nother life. Uh, but, and yet remains probably the most impactful. I, that book's available for free everywhere online or if you go to YouTube or whatever. Uh, but that book is, uh, that's probably the work that I'm, I, I wrote that book ultimately for my kids. Because I'm like, at the end of the day, you're, there's no U-Haul that goes to heaven. You're not going to care what you built or what you have. You're going to only care about one thing, how you feel. And so if you can't become a master of your own feelings and in every 
unfortunate, challenging, difficult situation, if you can't see the silver lining of how that's going to make you a better person, then you're probably doomed to sadness, anger, misery, uh, stress, anxiety, and um, and yet it's all a choice. Every emotion is a choice. I ask my kids one question every morning at the breakfast table: Who's in charge of your feelings? Just remind them, purge that victimhood, realize that this is your life. So that yeah, that's what that book's about. But this other book, my 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 book coming out in November is called Have It All. And it's five ROIs to become a self-made millionaire in less than five years. But this new book is really just about decision making. It's how do you how do you how do you make all the right yeses and no's to live the most beautiful, amazing life? Because every pain comes from the wrong decision. Yeah, That's, I'll, I'll tell you, anybody that is listening to this right now who doesn't go buy all of those books, get all of those books, I don't even understand it. I don't get it. Listening to you just wax poetic for, I told, I, this has got, gone longer. So I'm going to be respectful of your time too. Cause I am just realizing that uh, because I'm just eating it. I'm just eating it up, man. But anybody who doesn't go and buy those books is crazy. One of the things that I just took away from what you said was logical, being logical, making logical decisions will only get you so far. I love that. I, you, you had the same, one of the same goals. You said that you want to be a billionaire within the next five, within, I think it was the next five years. I don't think I didn't catch that. Uh, it's the same. I, I have a, I have a very similar goal, and that is not logical to a lot of people. But I know that it is possible if I surround myself around people like you who dream like that and inspire me to take the actions like that. And uh, I love it, man. I'm excited to watch your journey over the next five years to get you as you get there, man. Okay, you too, Tyler. It's, it's obvious. I mean, that is there, and I hope everyone can kind of feel that if you're as excited as Tyler is, is that I am. It's that life is really about one thing growth. Tony Robbins says, if you're not growing, you're dying. And so are you growing a little? Are you growing a lot? Are you growing at max? For me, I'm high octane. I want it all. I'm a gladiator. So I'm going to go in the arena and I'm going to fight full out because I, I want it all. I love it. And you can have it all. That's what you, that's, that's it, man. You can have it all. If you d- deliver on the right actionables with purpose, with intention. And I think that that's the takeaway. That's the ultimate takeaway from this conversation is that you can have it all if you have an intentional drive and you define what having it all even means, you know, now thank you so much, Chris, for taking the time man, to be on here and uh, you know, valuable time, hugely, hugely valuable to every single person that's listening. And, and I appreciate it, man. Anything else that you want to say on your end as we wrap this up? No, listen, I, I just want to thank everyone for listening, for following Tyler. Uh, for those of you that want to learn more about me, just Google Chris Crone. It's spelled weird. It's uh, Chris with a K K R I S Crone K R O H N. And uh, if you go to my YouTube channel, for example, I got all my books there. You can have them all for free. Um, and I, I hope they can help you and take your life to the next level. Absolutely. Absolutely. We'll make sure that all those links are in our show notes as well. And everyone, everyone, if they're not already connected to Chris on social needs to go connect and you'll get a wealth of knowledge every single day. That's a built-in mentor for, dude, it's freaking a built-in mentor for free every day with the stuff that you drop. And it's stuff that I listen to and consume and I'm grateful for every day, man. So thank you so much for this information as well. That you're a good dude and we appreciate it. All right, everybody. Thank you so much, Tyler. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Hey, take care.